The Let's Discuss with Thomas Hayes. He's the chairman and managing member at Great Hill Capital and Ted Rossman, creditcards.com industry analyst at Bankrate. Good to have you both with us. Thanks for having me. Thomas, when the Fed cuts rates by half a percentage point in an emergency rate cut huh. before an official meeting, yeah. does this have the effect of creating more panic rather than calm as we saw today in the markets? Was this the right move? Yeah, I, I think irrespective of the rate cut today, I think you're going through a bottoming process. So you have to look at uh, the market, you know, fell 15.8% peak to trough. So you're not going to bottom out in one day. Um, what he's basically done is he's set up the economy for a back half recovery. We have a lot of good things that are going to be happening in the back half with Boeing coming back online with the rate cut filtering through. So. I think um, I had expected them to do a little more with the balance sheet before they went straight to the emergency cut. It was priced in four cuts for the year, but uh, to get the 50 basis points right right now, it certainly won't hurt. That'll start to stimulate liquidity in the economy. They've got more that they, they can do with the balance sheet, and, and we can look forward to a back half recovery. But Thomas, are you concerned that this shot was fired too soon and too aggressively? Yeah, I, I think there was a little political pressure. I, you know, when you see Singapore is back to work, they got this thing contained in literally like right. four to six weeks. China, you've got Apple, 85% of stores back. Uh, Starbucks, 100% of stores back. So while we're just starting and they don't know the magnitude in the United States, my, my sense is that we're going to contain it more effectively than they have in China um, and certainly more quickly. So we've got a lot of stimulus coming in at, at this time and we're moving into a seasonably favorable period. I know the doctor said that the change of weather won't help everything. Of course, we, we know that that's true, but it certainly won't, won't hurt cont uh, containing it. All right, Ted, what do you think the Fed actually accomplished with this move at this time? From a consumer standpoint, I don't think it's done anything because really the worry here is people are afraid. They don't want to travel. That's the big thing. We're worried that this might spread to other areas of the economy and that we might see a broader pullback in discretionary spending. You know, what if people get so afraid that they don't want to go out to eat, they don't want to go to sports events? That's kind of the worst case scenario. We've seen some of that in China and Italy, but I think as far as travel goes, the Fed can't make people get on those planes if they're afraid to travel. Right, and of course, keeping in mind uh, that the strength of the U.S. economy is underpinned by consumers. Seventy percent of the U.S. economy is made up of consumer spending, so you want to keep consumer confidence uh, high and not sure that the Fed or anyone can do much about that. But look, at the same time, Thomas, we did have, as you said, other central banks taking action. Just today, Australia and Malaysia cut rates. Yeah. Other central banks have indicated that they're going to take action. And President Trump was making the point today that the Fed can't afford but not take action, otherwise it's going to be left behind. Let's watch. Yeah. Other countries have lower rates because their Feds, their, their, uh, their currencies are cut to a level and their rate is cut. They play with their currency, they play with the value of their currencies, and we don't do that. We don't do that. We have a different kind of a uh, theory going, and it really puts us at and I don't say necessarily to do it, but we have to be competitive with other countries. When we're paying two points more than Germany, or we're paying more than other countries, we should be paying less than everybody else. We have the dollar, we have the strength, we have the greatest country on earth. We should be paying less. So the Fed rate is too high. It's very simple. It's too high. Too high? Does he have a point? Well, I, I think he's setting the table to do fiscal stimulus, and, and we're seeing that around the world. We saw in Italy yesterday 3.6 billion euros. Uh, we saw in Germany for the first time in a long time they were willing to start some, some fiscal stimulus. So I think President Trump wants to bring rates down so we can borrow cheaply, refinance the debt, do more infrastructure, and make us competitive globally. And this is certainly one aggressive way to go about doing it. It certainly won't help. It will help the recovery in the back half. And when you look at stocks, you know, you value them uh, on the discount rate of future cash flows. So if you bring that discount rate down, even if earnings come down a little bit in the first quarter and second quarter, you can keep levels somewhat elevated through the lower of the, the di discount rate. Ted, here's the concern. With the current rate where it is now, with this half a percent cut today, where is there room to maneuver as far as the Fed is concerned? If this does worsen. What does the Fed do next? What are the tools it has in its toolkit? They don't have a whole lot more bullets in that chamber in terms of more rate cuts. Like Tom was saying, maybe they could do something with the balance sheet. I think ultimately this is a health issue, not really an economic
spread. Visa and MasterCard have chalked down their estimates by about two to three percentage points next quarter based upon consumer spending. The worry is that people are afraid to go out and do things and spend money and travel. But we're not quite seeing that here in the U.S. yet. Not well, in yet. In terms of travel, yes, because airlines have canceled flights, cruise lines have canceled cruises, but we haven't seen anybody, there are no mass quarantines in the U.S., for example, as there have been in China. Right, and we hope that continues. So I think a lot of this right now is pricing in potential future risk. Hopefully it's not as bad as we fear. And, you know, it's just something that people are nervous about right now. And, and there's also the fact that maybe we were due for a pullback to begin with because stocks had risen so far, so fast. Fast. So, you know, in some ways this was coming. We didn't know it was going to be coronavirus, but, you know, hopefully this all passes and things get back to relative normal pretty soon. Yeah, hopefully uh, some of the consensus say first quarter, second quarter, given that there'll be uh, a GDP drop, but uh, hopefully it'll pick up after that. All right. Thank you so much, Thomas Hayes and Todd Rossman. Appreciate it.